Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Pro Wrestling Straight Shooter. I'm your host, Tats Deej. I want to thank you for following me and continuing to watch. Got a lot to talk about in this episode, so I want to jump right in and discuss something that absolutely pisses me off to no end about the internet wrestling community, and that is this ridiculous notion that every loss is a burial, and I cannot stress how stupid this mentality is. I'm going to use WrestleMania 31 as my shining example here. I was watching the show, and I was live-tweeting during the event, and there were three key matches on the card where, at least from what I could see, the internet wrestling community got his panties in a bunch, and that was the John Cena-Rusev match, the Bray Wyatt-Undertaker match, and the Randy Orton-Seth Rollins match. Now, let me start by saying this. If you're even on the WrestleMania card, you're not buried. If you're on the WrestleMania card in major matches and major storylines, you are absolutely not buried. I'm going to start with the Randy Orton-Seth Rollins match because, again, these guys got in an uproar. Randy Orton doesn't need the push. He's already over. Seth Rollins needed the push more than anything else. That match did two things. One, it made both guys look good, and it set Seth Rollins up for the Money in the Bank cash-in at the end of the pay-per-view. Two, it made Randy Orton look like a million bucks and made him a viable number one contender for that title moving forward, and they've been able to milk that story for two more months. Moving over to the Bray Wyatt Undertaker match. Let's start here. The Undertaker losing at WrestleMania 30 to Brock Lesnar and the streak being broken was shocking enough. If you went into WrestleMania 31 thinking that The Undertaker was going to drop back-to-back WrestleManias, you are part of the problem in this entire ridiculous misconception. Okay? What did happen was Bray Wyatt looked fantastic, and he carried a very rusty Undertaker, and he did it while he was injured. Now, there's an argument to be made for where they've gone with Brett Wyatt or Brett Wyatt. Bray Wyatt since WrestleMania, and that's a discussion for another day. But in that match, Bray Wyatt looked spectacular. He made The Undertaker look spectacular. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that at the end of it all because that's the moral of the whole story. The third match, John Cena and Rusev. And this is a feud that I've been very high on. They've been able to milk this one for four solid months. The big thing here, yes, John Cena won the match, but no. Rusev didn't get buried. Rusev looked freaking phenomenal, and he's looked phenomenal month after month after month against John Cena. And again, it's John Cena. And regardless of how you feel about him, he's the top star. You don't bury somebody by putting them in repeated title matches against your top star. You want to bury Rusev, you have him lose the title one time to John Cena, and then you have him on the main event jobbing out to Fandango the next week. That's how you bury Rusev. Moving forward from there, I remember when I got into the wrestling business in the mid-90s, uh, I was green, you know, greener than hell, man. I didn't know anything about the business. I was still looking at it as a fan, and of course, if you come in, it's like, I want to win. I want to be the top guy. And I was talking with one of the, you know, one of the older guys, a guy who'd been around a while. He'd done jobs for WCW, WWE. And I asked him, I was like, you know, how do you feel about losing? And he's like, quite frankly, he's like, did I get paid? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, if I got paid, I won. You know, at the end of the day, it's all a work, and it's all about telling the story. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I want to get into some shining examples of guys who, by today's internet wrestling standard, got buried early on in their careers. And I'm going to start pretty high on the totem pole with Chris Jericho. When Chris Jericho made the jump from WCW to WWE, he was a star in a bag, man. You didn't have to do anything with that guy. All he had to do was walk on, open his mouth, and bam, he was a main eventer, right? So they bring him out there, and he's Chris Jericho, and he's The Rock, and they're, bam, they're jabbing back and forth in this epic promo, and they get him right in there with The Rock, and, you know, Chris Jericho versus The Rock, and he gets out there, and he loses. And then he su continues to lose to The Rock again, to Triple H repeatedly, to Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't think Chris Jericho beat anybody of major significance the first year he was in the WWE. Moving forward from there, he went on to eventually go over against The Rock and Stone Cold in the same night. He went over Stone Cold and Triple H in a tag match the night when Triple H tore his quad the first time. And I'd say at the end of the day, things that worked out pretty well for Chris Jericho when he started out under what today's internet wrestling community would consider a burial. Moving forward from there, again, another big name in the industry, and God rest his soul, Eddie Guerrero, when you when he first came over again from WCW to WWE, it was him, Benoit, Perry Saturn, and Dean Malenko. Their first night on Raw, Vince set a stipulation that if those guys wanted a job in the WWE, they all four had to win their respective matches. And they didn't. 
moving forward from there, none of them really beat anybody of significance for a while. And looking at Eddie Guerrero, I'd say at the end of it all, it worked out pretty well for him. Moving even higher up the food chain, going damn near to the top, Stone Cold Steve Austin, arguably one of the top three names in the entire history of the business. When he first came over from WCW to WWE, he was the ringmaster. And I remember when I first saw him, I think it was on Superstars, I completely marked out. I'm like, holy shit, they got Steve Austin. That's awesome. This guy's got it, man. I, I knew he had it. You knew he had it. And everybody else knew he had it long before he did. So he gets on there. He's the ringmaster. And he subsequently loses repeated matches to Sabio. Vega. And nothing against Savio Vega. I was a huge mark for him at the time, but in the grand scheme of the fans' perspective of storylines, who is Savio Vega? He lost to him in consecutive strap matches. He lost to him under a hood as the Caribbean kid. I was ringside at a Superstars taping when Stone Cold Steve Austin laid down for a job guy named Eddie Jackie after British Bulldog clotheslined him from the outside. So again, by today's internet wrestling standards, they buried Steve Austin. Keeping with the Steve Austin theme, after he becomes Stone Cold Steve Austin, they get him into a program with Bret Hart. And for months, we got fed. Stone Cold Steve Austin, going to take on Bret Hart, going to beat his ass, going to beat his ass. And we got behind, yeah, Stone Cold's going to beat Bret Hart's ass. They get into, they finally get in the ring. They put the two of them together. Stone Cold, Bret Hart, sub, uh, submission match, I believe it was. They get in there, and they're going after it, and he's finally going to kick his ass. And he doesn't win. Now, there are going to be people that are going to argue, oh, he didn't tap out, he passed out, he didn't say I quit, he didn't give up, anything like that. That's not the point. The point is he still technically lost the match. He was face down in a puddle of his own blood with Bret Hart with his arm raised in victory. Again, by today's standards, according to the internet wrestling community, Stone Cold Steve Austin got buried. No. What Stone Cold Steve Austin did was went out and had the match of his career, the defining match of his career, and he made himself in that night. And that, at the end of the day, is the moral of the story. It's not whether you won. It's not whether you lost. It's how well you went out and told that story and whether or not you made the other guy look just as good as you in that match. And that's what Stone Cold Steve Austin did that night. He told a story, he cemented himself as a top player in this industry, and the rest is history. And that's the lesson that needs to be taken away from this. One of the first things I learned when I was you know, in the industry was, go out there and make the other guy look good. I have a friend of mine that I went through the business with, he was Fast Eddie, the pizza delivery guy. He wrestled a guy on a show. This guy's name was The Crasher, and he was absolutely the shits, dude. And they told him that ahead of time. They got him backstage. They're like, look, brother, this guy is the shits, but he's going over on you. Okay? He's going over on you. Make him look like a million bucks, and I promise you, better things will come your way. And that, at the end of the day, is what it's all about. It's about going out there, telling that story, making the match look as good as it possibly can. And for anybody who thinks that anybody's being buried right now, look at the matches themselves. Rusev and John Cena. John Cena's been having the best matches of his career, in my opinion, against Rusev. Rusev, obviously not being carried in the ring by John Cena. He's going out there, he's doing his own thing, and he's looking damn good at it. Seth Rollins now speaks for himself. Bray Wyatt, again, discussion for another day. I'm not really sure about where they're going with him. But all of these guys are continuing to shine when during WrestleMania, the entire internet wrestling community said, oh, they got buried, they got buried. No, nobody got buried because they're still fighting for the top of the card, okay? Now, if you've made it this far and you agree with me, awesome, leave some comments below, talk to me on Twitter, share my videos if you think they're worth it. If you think I'm absolutely nuts, let me leave one last thing hanging in the air. If you think you know anything about burial, ask Jack Swagger about being buried. I'm Tats Deej. Thanks again for watching. Follow me, Tats Heel, on Twitter. I'm out.